Hello. I wanted to have a word about top team privilege. Because it may be something you've never thought about. Maybe you've, uh, you've got, you're running a small business you've started that's growing. Maybe you're just a member of a top team. Or maybe you're running a, a sizable business. But I'd just like to have a think about top team privilege. I don't think it happens as much today, but um, every time I took over running a business, the very first thing I always did was to get rid of reserved car parking spaces, usually for directors. I don't think that applies as much today, but I just do not understand it. Why should a director, just because they're in the top team, be able to park in a designated place? What's that all about? As far as I'm concerned, the earlier you get into work, the closer you can park to the door, if that's what you want to do. Equally, I don't think it happens as much now, but I remember as a young man, relatively young man, I was at uh, GEC Trafford Park, which formerly had been called Metropolitan Vickers. It used to be the biggest employer in Europe. I think it was 21,000 people worked there. And I couldn't believe there were seven different places and times to eat i.e. canteens, based upon your position in the, in the company. Quite unbelievable. And people spend a lot of time vying with each other as to whether they are in this canteen or that canteen at this time or that time. And again, the companies I ran, uh, and I inherited one or two directors' dining rooms, they went pretty much immediately. I don't see why directors, top team, should have different food be treated differently to other people in the company. You're paid a better salary. Isn't that enough? But then there's another one which is prevalent still today, which is a pension scheme for directors, a pension scheme for the top team that is more generous than the pension scheme for the rest of the company. What's that all about? I frankly just think that's disgraceful. I worked hard at getting rid of them. It's quite a difficult thing to do, as you'd imagine. But nevertheless, I cannot see any reason for that. And also, there used to be company cars. Again, that tends not to be now. But the same thing applied. Why should you have a company car just because of the position you're in? You should have a company car, if it's relevant, or a car allowance, based upon how many miles, company miles, you might do in the year. And then the final one flying around the world. At one point I had 14 companies around the world and I and many members of my company would need to fly around the world. And the same thing applied. I didn't see any reason why only senior people could fly business class. You know, is their job more important? No, it isn't. Not in that way. So I introduced a rule that everyone flew economy unless the flight duration was over five hours. And that was everyone in the company. And that just seemed to me fair and equitable. There may be many other things, and I would just ask you to think about it. You know, if you're a small company, just think about where you're gonna be as you get, get bigger, because you'll find, I hate to tell you, advisors may tell you, oh, it's a good idea to do this, it's a good idea to do that. Well. You know, you're running your business, you decide if it's a good idea that the top team should demonstrably be treated differently. I was really uh, impressed. I was chairman of uh, Cassata, a private company owned by Andrew Kluge up in um, Bolton for a few years. And one of the things Andrew introduced was that anyone in the company could apply to attend a board meeting. And this started whilst I was chairman and it was fascinating because firstly, of course, you like to think that lots of confidential things are being discussed, but they're not. And nothing ever got out anyway. But the feedback we got from these people who actually made a really important contribution in the meeting. You know, I can remember the, the first, uh, first woman we had who came in and she said, I couldn't believe what went on. 
you know, we just assumed it was just Andrew talking. We just assumed that you were chatting. But actually, the way it's structured, the uh, debate and discussion that goes on is absolutely fascinating. Uh, and it's really good to know. And you see, that's another point. People down the organisation will always assume up at the top, if you're behind closed doors, all kinds of things are going on that aren't going on. So that's the message from me today. Please have a think about top team privileges and whether they really, really are appropriate.